so today we will start dynamic memory allocation so yeah dynamic memory allocation for example generally what we are doing that example i am giving you so suppose i will give you one assignment also write a program to handle five students record so write a program to handle five students record so what we have we do did in this program so we have to handle students roll number student name total marks how I many how much mark student got we have to handle student name student roll number student marks so for this we what we will do scan five student record print on the screen so after printing the data display a menu for sorting a database roll number sorting name sorting marks sorting after printing the database so this is your homework you have to do after printing the data displaying menu for sorting database so either sorting roll number so you have to use bubble short selection short or any other sorting technique that is available on the google marks so this according to the user select that menu you have to short that data and display that database scan an option from the user according to the option provided by the user short the database and display the result for int i am giving you how to take which variable you have to take so integer roll number of five you have to take five array character name of five student in five, 10 strings so here you have to use array of array float marks of five this is your homework we have not started yet the dynamic memory allocation this is your homework i have given so i will remove this first so write a program to handle five student record we have to handle student name student roll number and student marks so scan five student and print on the screen so whatever the data that you have to print immediately on the screen after printing the data display a menu for sorting database so you have to do the display menu that is the what things you have to short you have to short roll number you have to short by name you have to short by marks so roll number that is one two three four sequence ascending order name that means a b c d sequence and marks that is the one two three four ascending sequence and scan an option from the user according to the options provided by the user sort the database and display the results so this program you have to do by yourself so you have to take integer roll number character name of five student it will store in the 10 byte string so one character of zero that means the first student second student third student name like this way and float of mark next we will start the dynamic memory allocation so you have to maintain a memory at runtime is called run dynamic memory allocation so dynamic memory allocation memory allocation at the runtime maintain memory runtime so we have to make decision at the runtime we have to allocate the memory we have to deallocate the memory so like this way at we are doing that is called dynamic memory allocation so c language supporting dynamic memory allocation with the help of these functions wherever i will write dma in the short form that is the dynamic memory allocation the help of functions so these are the functions malloc alloc alloc free these four function are used in the dynamic memory allocation this is the predefined function given by the library using this function we can allocate the memory we can deallocate the memory we can reallocate the memory so these are the four function available in our library that we can use using that we can allocate the dynamic memory allocation so write down this once you complete inform me so this understood this homework yes okay then so how we will do so we will do this is the as include std library dot h that is the predefined library so we need to include the std lib dot h then after this is the syntax 
or the declaration of the malloc calloc or realloc and free so void pointer this is the return type then calloc function you always you have to see what is the declaration using declaration you will understand what will be my return type return type is the pointer so i need to store inside the pointer like this way so what are the members so parameters that is also important size underscore t n member and size underscore t size we need two parameter to pass to calloc and it will return address so that is the because of that reason we, our return type is the pointer so whenever uh, anyone will return the address so we are storing in the pointer so because of that reason and what is this n member and size that we will see with example malloc there is size underscore t this is the for malloc then pre realloc word pointer and size these are the declaration of the malloc calloc free and realloc so here we understood whenever we did the malloc at that time it will return the address so we are storing in the pointer here also it is returning the address reallocation also returning that free is not returning anything and we are passing the address so malloc and calloc is useful for allocating the dynamic memory malloc and calloc is useful for allocating the dynamic memory free is useful for deallocating the dynamic memory so name itself tells that free that means it is deallocating the dynamic memory and reallocate so realloc is useful for increasing or decreasing the previously allocated memory that means reallocation name its itself tells that that is doing the reallocation reallocation that means whatever the memory created by calloc or malloc we have to increase that memory or we have to decrease that memory so using that realloc is useful for increasing or decreasing previously allocated memory okay so we just now whatever things we have did that all things did using the static memory allocation that is the stack stack section or data section of the memory we have used dynamic memory allocation is used the heap section of memory so runtime memory allocation did by the heap section so dma data store in heap section of memory whenever you will see the runtime memory allocation so runtime memory allocation using the malloc calloc realloc or free it is allocating the memory in the heap section of the memory so what things happen in the static memory allocation so this is for static memory allocation not for dynamic what things we have did at the compile time lookup table created a uh, size decided what happened at the load time load time that is nothing but the execution time it is reserve the memory and at the run time you can access that memory so these things we did in the static memory allocation till now whatever the program we have did in the inside that program what the compile time lookup table is created size decided at the compile time itself when we load at the time reserve memory is reserved in our ram section and the runtime you can access that memory so these things did in the for static memory allocation so i can draw the table here so in the dynamic memory allocation everything is done at the runtime the first thing is the size decided size decided so i will write here size first second thing is the reserved memory so reservation third thing is the accessing the data so in static size is decided at the compile time load time reservation and accessing the memory is run time in dynamic size is the decided at the 
run time reservation of the memory run time and accessing the memory also run time so this is the difference between static and dynamic so malloc and calloc here you have seen the malloc and calloc malloc and calloc return the starting address of the so i will write here malloc and calloc functions return starting address of dynamic dynamically allocated memory okay write down this and once you done inform me so understood this malloc and calloc is the returning the address that address is the starting address of dynamically allocated memory in the dynamic our data are stored in the if section of the memory or if of the ram so in the static everything is done at the compile time load time and run time here dynamic everything is done at the run time okay so we will do one the programs i will continue here only so our title is allocate a memory for one integers here we need one more thing as include std library dot h so here i am taking one pointer and i am storing the return address of the malloc in my pointer i am calling the malloc function and uh, what is size so i need size of one integer printf enter the data canf percent d comma p then printf star p is equal to percentage d slash n oh, star p here i have not star eight okay so how the things happen in the memory so whenever we write integer star p that means one pointer is created in my memory that is the static area of my memory so here this is my point p and that location is 2000 whenever we are writing malloc of size of integer so malloc that means it is created the runtime memory in the if section so whatever the size we have given that much byte of data is allocated so malloc is allocating the memory in the if section suppose that address is 1000 and one byte memory is allocated and what is returning here so what it returns the starting address starting address is the 1000 and the what we are storing inside the pointer pointer we are storing the whatever the starting address it is written so here inside my pointer i am storing the 1000 okay so here i have did the enter the data and scan up percentage d here p p pointer name allocates the starting address so whatever the on the 1000 available at there i have to store the data so whatever the scan up data will enter user it will store at this location because inside the pointer 1000 is stored so here my data 10 suppose you enter by user so 10 data is stored at the hip section of the memory and whatever the print using the pointer that is indirect access of this data and we are printing the data on screen so malloc is creating the memory at runtime so at the compile time and load time no memory creation in my ram at runtime it's create the memory that how much size of integer that much uh, memory it's create in the ram and it is written the starting address starting address written we are storing in the pointer and we have to now store the data in the into this so using pointer we can store the data using pointer we can access the data uh, yogin by we using these things it's saving the memory yes exactly okay so yeah for example i will give you just a second first i will run this code my data is 10 and my star p data is also 10 so so why we are using these things suppose you you are using the 1000 bytes array and you are using only five bytes of that so rest of all bytes are 000, 000 allocating in the stack section of the memory so we are generally doing this type of things so because of that reason we are wasting the memory so what are the benefits of malloc malloc benefits and uh, malloc it's create the memory at the runtime 
whenever you need more more memory you can use the re reallocation in your function or in your code so reallocation will do the re reallocate that increasing the memory and decreasing the memory so we are ultimately saving the memory so there is the huge benefit of the malloc calloc realloc but this is used only in the os development and the bigger application development so related to the micro processor and microcontroller these things we are not using but these things we are using in the like a very big controller very big motherboards of the our system so inside that they are using the intel is using nvidia is using because nvidia and intel is are doing things with the much more memory but in the one mb of memory like this way we are not using the malloc calloc and runtime environment in the automotive industry but you should know about these things this is the most important things in the semiconductor industry is using and the many more things so that is the in our os also these things is happen in the memory when whenever we open the any application so malloc is creating the memory like this way understood this how malloc is creating the memory what we are doing using the pointer how to access the data of that memory and and how to print so write down this program here size that means how much byte memory we have to allocate so size of integer that means here four bytes of memory allocated and what are the return type depends on that you so my return type is also integer and the i am storing inside the integer pointer so when whenever i will scan data it will store to four byte of data so the here this is the pointer uh, data type is most important and the size of integer that means here it will it is creating the four byte data here suppose i will enter four then it it will the creating the four byte data directly one then that means one byte data two that means two byte data so how much size you will give that much byte of data it will create it okay done yes yes next is the allocate the memory for five integers so five integer that means five into four 20 bytes so here we will do this is size of integer is four multiplication with five that means 20 bytes data creating using the malloc it will return the starting uh, at location of the whatever the malloc array and we have to scan data here in the printf also we have to do the using same here i need to remove the address and instead of scanf i will use printf so here when we enter the size of integer multiplication with 5 that means that much byte of data allocated in the malloc but our return type integer that means we are expecting that the data is 5 integer so this is my pointer pointer address is 2000 this is 1000 so 1000 will return to pointer here is creating the blank memory space so whenever we write and scan up using we are filling the data that is the 10 20 30 40 and 50 and here we are printing that data we are indirectly accessing the data from the memory so that is my hip section memory and this is my stack section memory we are storing the starting address of the hip section allocated memory in the pointer and using pointer we are accessing the hip section data so we have no direct access of the hip section data so we have to store in the pointer and using pointer we are allocating uh, uh, storing the data accessing the data so like this way we are we have to do so because of that reason malloc is giving the starting address and using the address you can access that data and the allocate the uh, store and the deallocate like this way you can use okay write down this and inform me once you complete next allocate a memory for n integers that means user will give how much bytes of data they need so for this i will create another program as include standard library dot h need integer i and integer n numbers and one pointer printf enter 
n uh, how much bytes of data you need to create that we are asking to the users then scan f percentage d comma address of n and here i am allocating the memory p is equal to malloc of size of integer multiplication with n so here size of integer is 4 byte 4 byte that is multiplication with n that means how much byte data you need to create so at the runtime we are doing everything how much byte data need then print f enter the data and print the data that we have already did this i will run this code z103 dot c so i need six byte data suppose so enter the data 10 20 30 50 60 40 sorry i did one mistake here i need to do n gcc 103 dot c dot slash a dot exe then i will select n here is 3 my data is 10 20 and 30 okay so write down this code next allocating a memory for one string allocating a memory for one string so how we are generally allocating the memory for one string in the text section so we are doing like this way we have did the character s of 10 so we are we did like this way, right so this is my 10 bytes of data is created and we are accessing this data one by one lo or l slash zero we are putting here so using the scanf and we did like this way so character s of 10 this is the location of my memory for string so in the dynamic memory memory allocation how we will do so i will write the code i will erase this so as i mentioned return type is most important first i will do the has include standard library dot h so character pointer i will take here so character data type i have taken not integer integer i will take then 444 by data will memory will created p is equal to malloc of 10 that means here 10 bytes data is created whenever i need to access that so i will using the character pointer that means one by one byte at a time one one byte only i can access if i will take the integer pointer then uh, this is the 10 bytes data that means only two bytes and third bytes only two um, bits are available sorry you can see this is the difference so integer suppose i will take the here integer pointer and p is equal to malloc of 10 so malloc of 10 that means 10 bytes of data available and what is the size of integer pointer that means whenever i will scan data from user so user will enter h my h is stored in four bytes suppose i have taken the integer pointer then my h is stored in the four bytes this is bytes and uh, e that means another four bytes then l there is no space is available here so this is not right instead of integer we have to use character character that means one byte at a time it will use so h e l l o then slash zero is like this way it is storing because of that reason in the static also we have did the static inside the our current also character as of 10 we have did not not any time we have taken the integer here for the creating the string we have used only character s of 10 character array here printf enter the string tnf percentage s printf data is percentage s slash n so i will enter the string is hello then it will print the data hello yeah so write down this this is the, like this in the memory p is at 2000 location and 1000 of the malloc is storing this is 1000 and here h e l l o slash zero so like this way it is stored in the memory okay write down this so that's it for today we will see again tomorrow much more program in the dynamic memory allocation only